Welcome to this Easter special episode of JG's Cookbook. This special Sunday, which is Easter, and I wish you all a very, very, very happy Easter. Now, I have got something very special for you this Easter, and it's got to do with, well, chicken and fish. Now, usually, it's all about uh, Easter. Easter is all about eggs and so lots of... Um, things surrounding that. But I thought of, uh, well, I thought of showing you something which uh, the eggs come from, that is the chicken. Now Easter, as we all know, is a very um, auspicious occasion where Christians do believe that Jesus Christ rose and uh, after three days. And because of that, uh, Christians celebrate Easter. So this time I'm going to celebrate Easter with you. I've got some guests coming so uh, I might as well whip up something quickly and be ready for a special and simple Easter meal. So once again, Happy Easter. Now I'm going to show you exactly how to make an Easter meal which is going to be very very easy for you and uh, very very uh, totally delicious. Usually, uh, people make biryani and, uh, well, um, butter rice and chicken and lots of things which are very hard to make. Now, this particular meal is very, very simple, absolutely simple to make so that you can actually enjoy Easter and uh, you don't have to, you know, fret around too much in the kitchen. So that's why I came up with this uh, spicy chicken um, tandoori sort of recipe and uh, a wonderfully uh, delicious bland um, cashew nut rice. Okay? The first of all what we do is I'm going to marinate the chicken. So I'm going to give it a little bit of time to marinate and I'm going to do the rice and then I'll uh, do the chicken, the tandoori chicken curry. Now for this we need uh, curd, sour curd or yogurt, which is around 200 uh, grams. Into this, I need to add some spices because this is our marinade for the chicken. And I'm going to um, marinate around, um, well, 450 to 500 grams of boneless chicken pieces, okay? I'm going to just show you this, yes. These are some boneless chicken pieces, which has been cut into, well, fairly medium-sized chunks, you can see. Um, now, the reason why I took uh, or I opted for boneless chicken is mainly because, well, you don't have to, you know, the people, there are people who are fussy about um, having bones and uh, they don't like it and they like, uh, or they tend to like bone, boneless chicken. So that's why I uh, took boneless chicken, but you can uh, take boned, I mean, you can take chicken with bones. So it's all up to you. Now, for the marinade, what I need is first, I need around uh, 200 grams of nice, um, well, medium sour um, yogurt. Okay, and into this, okay, I'm going to add, now these are the spices, two to three teaspoons of um, chili powder. It all depends upon you now. You can add uh, two or three. It all depends on, on you. This is two and a half. Uh, I need one teaspoon of cumin powder, uh, one teaspoon of garam masala, okay, and um, one teaspoon of uh, black salt, okay. Black salt or, or you can, you know, you get it in every no um, supermarket. It's a North Indian type of uh, salt. They use it a lot in North India. So again, I'm going to say around two to three uh, teaspoons of chili powder, Kashmiri chili powder, uh, one teaspoon of cumin powder, one teaspoon of garam masala, and um, uh, around one teaspoon of um, kala namak or uh, black salt. Okay, so I'm going to put the whole thing in. Okay, easy. Just these powders in. Two teaspoons of chili sauce, okay, two teaspoons 
of chili sauce sauce. Now this is really going to be spicy, so you have to be really careful about how much spice you want. So if you're going to feed your children, obviously they wouldn't want so much spices. But this is like sort of a grown-up sort of um, meal, so um, I'm not going to concentrate too much on the children this time. Okay. Yum. Just mix everything together and you get a sort of, well, what do you call it? A pink, pinkish coral uh, marinade. Okay. Nothing else. No chopping. Nothing else. Very simple. Okay, now to this you can add taste and see whether you need a bit of salt and pepper. Okay, so let me just have a little taste where I don't have a spoon right now, so I'm going to use my measuring spoon. Anyway, mm. well, needs a bit of needs a bit of salt. Okay, because it needs to marinate. The chicken is going to absorb the salt. So a bit of salt, not too much, just a bit. Okay. And a little bit of pepper. Now, if you're allergic to pepper, don't add. But um, I want some pepper. Okay. Pepper. Mix well. Hmm. Nice. Thing needs a bit more chili sauce. Make it a little more hot. The heat. It's going to be really good. I feel like having something spicy today. Now, in this goes our boneless chicken, which is, uh, well, around half a kilo, 450 to 500 grams. Okay. This has to be chunked into medium-sized pieces. Okay. And just mix it along. There. So, this is done. That is, well, it's not done. Uh, the marinade is done. And the chicken has to absorb all the wonderful flavors. Mm, lovely. This has to be kept aside. Let this marinate and do its job. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is, by the time uh, that marinates, you know, this has to be turned into a sort of a tandoori curry sort of thing. I'm going to start off with the rice. Now, the rice I have already prepared is, this is like two cups of rice, which has been um, cooked in cashew milk, okay? Cashew milk. Now, what I did was I took 50 grams of cashew nuts, 50 grams of cashew nuts, and I soaked it in water for around half an hour. Then I ground it up into paste with either you can use water or milk. I used uh, milk. You can use anything, but I just want a nice uh, paste, a cashew paste, okay? Uh, once it's soaked, it's going to be very easy to uh, grind it up into a very smooth cashew paste. <music> We have around two cups of basmati rice. For that, we need one cup of uh, coconut milk or milk. Mix the uh, 50 grams of cashew nut paste in the one uh, cup of milk and the rest three cups of water, okay? And uh, I have made some cashew nut rice out here. So now I'm going to uh, temper the rice or I'm going to flavor the rice once more. Once more I'm going to tell you the process of the cooked rice uh, that is the cashew nut rice. I took 50 grams of cashew nuts. I soaked it in a little bit of, well, you can soak it in water or a little bit of milk after half an hour or around 45 minutes. Grind it into a very very smooth paste with a little bit of water or milk as you choose. Then what you do is add um, this 50 uh, grams of cashew nut paste with one cup of either coconut milk or uh, normal milk, okay? Mix it and you get uh, one cup of cashew coconut milk, cashew milk. And then uh, we add three cups of water with it. So altogether for two cups of 
uh, basmati rice, uh, we have four cups of liquid. Okay. Once that's uh, done, um, simmer it first. Bring it to a boil, simmer it, and then you get some lovely cashew nut rice, which is flavored. Obviously, you have to put your salt and seasonings, uh, like uh, pepper. After that, once that's done, okay, then this is done and cooled. The final process is to make it more prettier and more tastier is, well, add around three or four uh, spring onions. Depends on how much we want, okay. Chop it. Very, very, very light. Now, the reason why I take spring onions because it's easy uh, to chop and it's much easier and it's, it's a very, very mild taste rather than the strong taste of um, the shouts or the big onion. And it's also very pretty and doesn't sting my eyes. Okay, now finally, what we need is uh, to heat the pan for the rice. Now, what I do is add, well, now because it's a festive occasion, Easter, uh, I'm using a bit of um, clarified butter or ghee. You can use uh, butter or you can use sunflower oils uh, or anything. But then uh, I find because it's well, a nice festive season, uh, why not add a little bit of clarified butter or ghee? Just a bit. And now I've added just well, one or two, one tablespoon. You can add more if you want to. I'm just going to add a bit of oil, canola oil or sunflower oil together with this so that everything is moist and nothing is too uh, fatty. Okay, add my spring onions. Mm, look at those green discs, beautiful. Along with my uh, spring onions, I'm going to add my cashew nuts, okay? Now, I'm just going to add whole cashew nuts. You can add anything. You can chop it up if you want to. I'm lazy, so I'm not going to, okay? And besides, well, something different really gives a big bite, okay? Yes, and this has to saute for some time. Okay, and let this sizzle along. You can add a little bit of, um, well, green chilies. Let this sizzle just a bit, and then we can add our rice. Now this is right toasted golden. Add, well, one chili if you want. If you don't want, don't. Okay, green chilies. Once the green chili is added, don't wait too much. Just plunk in the rice, the cashew rice, cooked cashew rice. Mm. Now I have added a bit of spices um, in this, like two anise seeds and a bit of cardamom. Okay, let's keep this aside. So you can see the anise seeds and you may see the cardamom. Just mix everything, mm, lovely. Check for your seasonings, salt, pepper, everything. Now I have already salted uh, the cashew cooked rice. So, gorgeous. Now my cashew uh, rice is ready. Now I'm just gonna keep this aside before I'm going to transfer it into a, a serving plate and then garnish it. Just keep that aside. Now let's come back to our chicken which has been marinating for some time. And yes, it does need to marinate. All the beautiful flavors of the marinade is, you know, uh, permeated into the lovely chicken pieces. <clears throat> so this is done. Okay, oh, just look. Just look at this color, this coral pink, beautiful color. And now um, keep this aside. We need 
another pan to obviously cook the chicken. Um, now, before doing that, okay, uh, what we need to do is we need to fry the chicken pieces. Okay, now for that, we have to do a certain uh, technique, which is I'm going to retrieve only the chicken pieces into this bowl. Okay, chicken pieces into this bowl. Just the chicken pieces, not the marinade. Because we need the marinade for the base of the tandoori curry. Okay, just the chicken. I have retrieved all the chicken pieces from the marinade. Okay, and what I need to do is I need around well, two to three tablespoons of um, corn flour. Okay, teaspoons, I mean. And either corn flour or wheat flour, well not wheat flour, uh, gram flour, corn flour or gram flour, okay. This is to give the pieces a bit of heft, okay. And just mix this mixture in and I'm going to fry these pieces, these chicken pieces. There you go. Makes everything everything done. I have to, I need a, a pan. Now you can do the same thing with paneer. Okay, either chicken or paneer. Uh, you can you you can interchange the recipe and um, the same recipe, but um, cooking time will be much less. And in paneer, you don't have to put too much garam masala. Okay. Now, <clears throat> in that, you need a little bit of oil to fry the chicken. Canola oil, that's my choice. Just a bit. Just to fry the chicken pieces. And then I'm going to use the same oil um, for the curry, tandoori curry. Is going to be yum yum yum. Now put these chicken pieces into it and let it fry, fry, fry. Carefully. Oops. This is now, if I hadn't put the flour, corn flour, this wouldn't have stuck too much. I mean, the yogurt would have just dripped off. And we'll wait till these darlings are cooked and golden brown. Tender and beautiful, moist. The, the, the yogurt actually gives it a very moist and tender thing. That's why uh, tandoori and tikka, uh, they all have uh, yogurt because yogurt always uh, moisturizes the meat so it's a very good thing i always love to marinate fish and chicken everything with yogurt because it's got an acid medium it's got milk it's got lactic acid which uh, actually helps in the marination i'm going to just turn these chicken pieces over oh just look at it so beautiful bronzed and golden beautiful the color is gorgeous Colors really make me very happy. Gold and golden brown. It's not even brown, it's just bronze and golden. Now, let's keep this aside. Okay, now we need to make our curry in the same oil that we fried our um, lovely chicken pieces, which are bronzed and ready out there. We've got our uh, leftover marinade. What we have to do is we have to um, chop up a bit of spring onions. Okay. And that's just beautiful. The spring onions that crunch them. When you actually cut um, 
oops, cut the spring onions. It's really crunchy. Well, all we have to do is put these beautiful discs. You just keep uh, a little bit of green part of the spring onions for embellishment. A little bit of ginger, okay? Now, this ginger has been washed well, so I'm not going to bother, I'm not bother, I'm going to uh, just grate it and I'm not going to bother to peel it, okay? Because it's washed really well. Besides, again, get lots of fiber and antioxidants. Mm. Just, um, well, a teaspoon of ginger. That's it. Give it a crack. And then, just mix this. Now, this has to be um, sautéed till it's tender. It doesn't have to be crisp or brown. Just a bit tender. Okay. And capsicum, a red capsicum. Now, this is not very essential, but like I said, I love colors. And I'm going to add a bit of redness to this beautiful dish. Add cubes of capsicum. Big cubes, as uh, big as the actual um, chicken. mix it along. Once this is mixed, pour in your reserved marinade. Mix this and then put in your fried chicken pieces. Mm, lovely. I'll mix this along so we get a lovely curry, tandoori curry, and let this simmer for some time, around uh, 10 to 15 minutes, let it really simmer and cook well. Now the spicy curry, chicken curry, is done. It has been simmering for around 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes. Now, um, you don't, you have to actually make sure that the chicken is cooked thoroughly. Now, half, it was halfway cooked through or well, three-fourth cooked through uh, when you actually fry the chicken pieces. Um, then we put it in the gravy and the whole thing uh, is come into uh, a wonderful chicken, spicy chicken tandoori curry. I'm going to taste and see exactly how it is. Mm, lovely. And mm, nice. Now what I'm going to do is transfer it. Before that, let me give let me have a taste of it. This is hot. Don't want to bo boil my tongue. Okay. Mmm. 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 It's good, good. Everything perfect. You can add a bit more of pepper if you want to, but this is enough. Okay, mm, now what we do is, I'm going to transfer this into a waiting plate. Mm, lovely. Yum, yum. Like I said, you can um, make it with paneer, which is also very, very tasty. On top of this, we're going to embellish it with coriander leaves. Mm, lovely, lovely fresh chopped coriander leaves. And then our rice, which I have already assembled and kept out here. I've assembled it in this plate and I'm just going to take it out, yes. Now we'll put some spring onions, fresh spring onions here on top of this 
and on top of the rice. Okay, so that's done. My wonderful tandoori chicken curry and uh, cashew rice, both of which are a wonderful combination. And it's very simple. You don't have to do a lot of chopping or cooking or anything. It's just very, very simple, assembling everything together. And I know you'll try it. It's going to be wonderful. And I wish you all a wonderful and happy Easter.